The Pope and Young Club wants to welcome you as we rally together to ensure our bow hunting opportunities for today and tomorrow. You've come to the podcast that believes in preserving, protecting, and promoting the passion for bow hunting. Join us as we strive to be the voice of today's bow hunter. This is the Pope and Young Podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Pope and Young Podcast. Jason Roundsville here, joined as always by my co-host, Dylan Ray. We have with us, fresh off a of sheep hunt, we have regular member Kyle Hudgens, and we have Rachel Attila, who was his guide on this hunt. So, you guys, welcome to the show. Howdy. Thank you very much. Yeah. we're. This is uh, one of those things, sounds like quite the exciting adventure. And so who wants to lead us off and start us? How, how did this all come about? When did this Kyle, process start? <laughs> we better let Kyle start because it's kind yeah, of making. Yeah, I'll, I'll start it. So I, I guess I'll give uh, definitely credit to uh, uh, Grand Slam. I actually won a raffle with Grand Slam uh, for a grizzly bear hunt in Alaska. Called the grizzly bear guide, said, hey, I'm ready. Won the hunt. Uh, and absolutely had, he had no interest in taking a bow hunter now just flat out you can do it with a gun or you can't not going to come so <laughs> Paul Grand Slam back said hey we got a problem they basically gave me a hunt credit and I had this specific uh, sheep hunt on my radar for a while and uh, used that credit to pay for probably over half of this hunt and then uh, finished up so it's a good cheap sheep hunt out of my pocket and uh, yeah um, and then, uh, then that was booked, of course, just like everybody else seems like years ago, COVID hit and it got pushed back a couple of years. Um, actually the, I booked with, uh, Clint Collins, who was the previous owner of the, uh, concession and owners changed and, uh, I just let, you know, let the hunt stay as is and, and, uh, when it rolled around, a matter of fact, <laughs> I'd gotten off of social media. And, uh, uh, so when, when I guess Rachel saw that I was coming, she was like, Oh, well, I'll, I'll message Kyle. Cause we knew each other from previously. Uh, and then she must've thought I deleted her or something. Cause I was nowhere to be found. And, uh, <laughs> were you, so were you get banned off again? what's that? Were, were you banned again? No, I, I, I got banned to the point where I was like, you know what? I'm sick of this. <laughs> liberal <laughs> yes, it's I'm like, out of here because so, i think we're friends on facebook and, and about every 40 days you get back on or you used to and you'd be <laughs> like hey i just got done with my 30-day ban <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 it'd be off 40 on 10 off four, yeah just yeah, about like exactly. that exactly yeah uh, you got fed up with that so anyway so yeah i got off and then uh i get off at the uh little airport in the yukon and and I look out the window and here drives up a truck and there's Rachel. I'm like, oh, there's, there's Rachel. And come to find out, I'm like, wait, she's wearing the same hat as the outfit I'm going with. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered what the heck is that blonde girl doing up here? I think the last time Colin and I had first met, I was working for Mike and Dixie Hammett. And I think you and Dixie picked me up at the bus station and we went in and we were, we were flinging arrows at Grizzlies trying to, that was back in what, 2013? It was a while back, yeah. Grizzly's sitting right over here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of, it was neat how it all ended up coming together. And when I saw his name on the roster, I literally, I thought Kyle died because, you know, he was so active and had such a prominent feature and everything. I was like, I, I didn't even, I didn't even get the obituary. Like that would have been a good one yeah. to read. Come on. See, that's a nice thing about not posting is no one expects me to be on Facebook. So <laughs> Although the downside is if I do kick the bucket, nobody's going to know. Because I post, you know, once a year on my birthday, I say, hey, thanks for the birthday wishes. That is my one annual post. There you go. But now, Rachel, so how did you wind up in the Yukon? So you're from B.C. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden now you're guiding for sheep in the Yukon. How did that come about for you? I actually, so... I've been a career guide for, oh, I'll age myself here, but a decade and a half at least. 
And um, my boyfriend, he and I, we got together this summer or this spring, I guess. And originally I was going to be running another area. So it was like, oh, well, I'll come up and visit you. And then it turned into um, the area I was going to run fell through. And he goes, well, how do you feel about base camp cook? And I'm going to preface this. I have never been a base camp cook. Like it was a running joke that I was barred from kitchens because I was going to wreck something, burn something. And holy hell, if the cabin was standing by the time a dinner was ready, it was going to be a blessed miracle. So I actually was base camp cooking and uh, I got to put my name on the roster for about three of the hunts this year. Um, and one of them, I'd kind of put my hand up and I said, I'd, I'd love to do that archery hunt with Kyle. If that is the Kyle Hudgens from Texas, if it turns out some you hunts, it's not oh, Kyle. Man. No, I'm out. <laughs> Did she, Dylan? Did she just say V Kyle Hudgens? She did. V okay. e. Kyle Hudgens. I want, that, I want that on my Hope Young man. membership from now on. V Kyle Hudgens. <laughs> yeah. That's, she hasn't hey, called you the Jason Roundsville yet, though. That's what I'm confused. Yeah. That's sorry. You know, nice thing is we have editing capabilities in yeah. the first. <laughs> mm-hmm. So. Well, I, I didn't take you on a death mart yet, so I feel like you know Kyle kind of earned that one. We. It was supposed to be, I think, originally, Kyle, when you'd followed up with Jordan, it was going to be, you know, like a gentleman's hunt. You know, you, I'll let you kind of dive into that. No, nah, it, it, it was, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm turning, I'm literally turning 50 on this hunt. So that I'm, I'm getting too old for the mountains in my book. But uh, so I was like, look, we need to make this is like the, where you take the old guys that are trying <laughs> to get their last sheep kind of thing. And, uh, so no, apparently that got lost somewhere because we get dropped off on a on a bush trip, you know, backpack with 10, 12 days worth of gear. And uh, we're going to pick you up like 30 miles on the other side of these mountains. <laughs> that's not a gentleman's hunt, just so you know. That's... Well, that's see, a you fist somebody off hunt right there. Oh, here we go. Well, see the hardest yeah. part, like when we came into this area this year, when Jordan took um, over managing it, like there was very little information that was shared. So we were, you know, considering what information we had to work with, which was about this much. Um, we had tried to go and figure out where the airstrips were and we got that all dialed and a couple of the old guys we had tried to talk to said, well, this, this be a pretty good area. And as it turns out, when Kyle and I landed, I got landed there first. I said, archery sheep on the cabin. When I came down, forget my, forget my brain right now, Kyle, but it was a friend of yours that you had talked to that oh, had Zach killed Walters. an archery ram. That's Zach right. Walters killed there. With Connor Baker. So I was like, well, heck, we're in archery country, Kyle. All we got to do is get the Indian a little closer. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it worked. We had, we had quite the march though, because we went down trying to figure out the old horse trails and trying to get up onto a shoulder that I'd kind of want to make say, a play on. Yeah, that that first few hours, Rachel was probably thinking, "What did I get myself into?" Uh we were trying to make <laughs> our way down the river, and uh, we kept thinking, "Well, clearly the, it's not, the trail isn't on this side of the river; it's got to be on the other side." So we would cross the river, and I think on the fifth river crossing i went totally under after slipping on a rock <laughs> completely soaked uh backpack holding me under the water <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, i was very happy when we decided let's just go up and get out of all this b- brush oh, did you gosh, ever yeah. find the trail no, no. We, we made our own trail <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> yeah um and, and eventually the moose they they haven't been kind of on point making us nice hard pack trail where we were going so we uh we ended up finding all of the uh, soft tundra boggy spots trying to navigate through the hummocks and that's one thing about the yukon bless it it is a workout because there's bogs on the side of the hill where it should be dry so you think mm-hmm. oh i'm gonna get up out of the bottom it's gonna be easy <laughs> going well Kyle, how many times did we sink up to our knees or our waist trying to get up that blessed freaking hillside? Yeah. There's there's water up top. Whenever we stopped for whatever that was, lunch, I I know I went right to sleep. I was so beat after those few first few hours. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it was quite. It's fun. That's the thing with R2 hunting, though, like anything. I mean, the biggest thing is getting high, looking at where we're going to have. And that's what we kind of decided we were going to do. It's big country where we were. 
Like I will send you some of the photos, but I know when Kyle and I started getting up and we were making our way and we come around this corner thinking, Oh, it, surely it's going to bald off. And then I remember Kyle, we got to those Aspen ridges and we were looking through and we're like, well, I think we got another four or five hours of bushwhacking. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm, and, and so i'm I, I like the story but i'm still waiting for where it gets fun <laughs> now, that's a few days from now uh, <laughs> we're we're on day one suck fest this is like yeah, earning our like, riches you know that's like because you know hunting is supposed especially but it's supposed to be something that you do for fun and uh i i've found that on some of mine i'm, I'm kind of looking around going you know, actually, I, I didn't even think of that, but but I had a friend of mine I was talking to, and they asked me, they said, which part of that is the fun part that you enjoy? And I had to think for a minute, and, and it, was, it wasn't anything like your story, but it was still, I'm like, yeah, there's somewhere in there. So, anyway. Oh, you were smiling. We were having fun. So, we? uh, I was smiling. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> So, so you're, uh, you found all the bogs, the moose did not cooperate by breaking trails for you. And so how you're, how many days in at this point? This day oh, one. this is the first, yeah, this is the first five oh, hours. First okay. As a matter of fact, we, we never really got out of the bush until we made camp. I mean, we were making camp at the bottom of the valley that we had got up into and we were right at where it was breaking. Yeah, because in the Yukon, you have to wait, you know, the six hours um, after you land. Um, so, you know, between the six to 12 hours after you land, I mean, you're going to be trying to get high anyway. So you are literally going on a nature walk. And I think we kind of epitomized the nature walk by going through every bit of flora and fauna we could find, <laughs> trying to make it to a bowl. All we know is we needed a flat enough spot for putting our tents down and enough water. And so. and so you found it. Five hours later, you found it. No, That's the end of the day. That oh, was the end of the day. day. All right. I think we made camp, but we we soldiered through because that was the one thing we made it around the rocks and slides and the aspens um, along that hillside, and then we dropped down, found half of a moose trail. But like I said, they're terrible with chainsaw, so we're hopping over logs, weaseling our way through the thickest part of the timber that we found, going up this draw, and then when we finally broke that then you're trying to find a caribou trail and caribou are no better at making trail they're kind of drunk they gotta weevil through so you gotta really think like a caribou and by the time you go in a straight line you probably put an extra 10 miles on so we were weaving our way through the lesser birch and buck brush i think by the time we made it to where we set tent camp i think all of us looked in we had dinner we glassed around i think we all went to bed we were sleeping by nine yeah it was it was nine o'clock at least yeah and i mean we landed We'd had some bad weather. So, I mean, we, I think we were all on the ground by 10, 30, 11. So, I mean, we hiked for eight hours that first day and we were just breaking tree line. Yeah. So day two, you wake up full of anticipation and, and how long was this hunt? How long, how long was it scheduled for? 10 days. 10 days. All right. So we wake up, actually, I think Rachel from her tent says, Hey, there's a wolf out here. Yeah, literally. <laughs> As like literally like almost in bow range out here, but mm -hmm. didn't really want to shoot a wolf on day one and have to pack a cape around for nine more days. Yeah. Cause I was going to make Kyle do it. If he thought that that was a great idea, <laughs> you know, I had just enough salt. I was like, Kyle, you need to think about this, <laughs> but uh, no, it was actually, I mean, gosh, what was it under hundred yards? And I mean, I, yeah. I only pack a 45 70 cause Kyle's a diehard archer. He doesn't pack a backup rifle. If he's going stick and string, he is a stick and string man through the end, which I really admire. And uh, I think that wolf, it came back and forth by the time we were having breakfast and we tried to glass around and we kind of decided, it was like, well, we need to embrace the suck. We're going to get up this hill one way or another. Right up from there. So, but yeah, we kind of, we had a plan. We we're going to go up onto the saddle and, from looking at my maps, it, it kind of went back into a, a pinnacle point where we had four or five different ridges that kind of came together. So one foot in front of the other, we made it literally straight up this draw. We figured would be the best spot where it didn't have any more buck brush to kind of swim up through. And then 
you know, from the ground, everything looks steep and, you know, we're kind of like, well, it's day two. We're feeling pretty spry. And I'll tell you what, by the time we got up there, when you're standing there with your trekking poles and you're looking straight into the mountain, you know, that pitch is a little bit more aggressive than we had previously thought. Yeah. Yeah. See, I tend to underestimate that. I've never been on a sheep hunt, but I'm like, oh yeah, that's all take me an hour to get up there. And then an hour later, I'm looking at the second half of that going, hmm, underestimated Mm -hmm. again. Mm-hmm. We 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 got up to the top roughly around lunch that day, right? And yes. we made camp. We made made camp, which means I get to unload a lot of the backpack onto the ground. <laughs> yeah. So made camp, and then we uh, just with a day pack headed up the ridge. Yeah. Uh, do some spot. Yeah, we did. We actually um, on this hunt, we had uh, a guy working for us from Southern Alberta. He was a great guy, Byron Cahoon. And he had never got to be on a sheep hunt before. And so he, he kind of goes, but after that first hill, he kind of, he started thinking about it. He brought a bunch of stuff extra that he thought he would need. After years of backpacking, Kyle and I have kind of got our systems down, but you know, some of these lessons you got to learn the hard way. And I know Byron, he kind of, after that first hike, he goes, yep, I didn't need this. I didn't need this. I didn't need this. He had like had mini Cabela's in the back of his backpack. <laughs> Do you have a Sam? Isn't that the person you want to be up on the mountain with? Because you're like, man, sure wouldn't be nice if I'd have brought this. And they're like, I have one. Hold on. Exactly yeah. how it was. Yeah. Oh, it was. It's nice to have them around. Oh, yeah. I just was glad I wasn't carrying that. He's a big, burly man. All the more power to him. But I think when we got back to camp, the, just to preface that, he goes, I don't think I needed six knives or four <laughs> knives, or whatever. Yeah. You know, Jason, we heard this about somebody else. Um, we, Remember both uh, Michael Waldell and Nick Munt said T-Bones like that. They call him the mom of camp because yes. they're like, dude, why do you have nail polish with you? Uh, I, just in case you needed it. Like, yeah. like he's got everything you could ever come up with. Uh, hey, I, I need this for some rare thing. Yep, got it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. See, I'm like that, but it's in the truck vault. I'm not packing that stuff up a right. mountain. So it's it's way better. There you go. But I'm well, not sure either. So <laughs> oh no, it was it was good. I think it was all pretty welcome that we were able to drop because I mean you think about it when even on day one and day two, I mean you're carrying water because we all took water from the creek. We had a big old drink. Because when you get high, I mean, until you know an area, you don't know if there's a little spring up uh, anywhere hidden little pockets. So we had full water, full bladders. I mean, we were we were sucking wind going up this hill because we wanted to at least know that we had a couple days water so that we could kind of sit high and just wait to see if there was going to be a big old band of rams come up and sit high up on a perch. So that was our whole mission. So we knew if we got to there, we could stash our water. And like Kyle says, we made camp and then we went for, I think we all had about a half an hour power nap. We were pretty played out at this point. And uh, we hiked up the ridge. It was pretty sweet. Actually, we had caribou come, we had a caribou cow come like right in. I think it was like 10 yards, Kyle. Hey, yeah. Yeah. so came in and checked us out and we had a little interaction. I have my dog. She packs with me. So I never have her on a leash or anything. She, she was sitting there watching the caribou and it was kind of neat because we had got, we had had a beautiful day. So you could see for absolutely miles and getting to see some new country. I think that's half of the adventure that we go for. And it was good knowing that we didn't pass the sheet behind us. So that was good. We climbed the right mountain at first because there's nothing yeah. worse than climbing the one and then looking back going, oh, shoot. How do we feel about that one, guys? So that, yeah. So from that, the first day we didn't see any sheep. We, the, the, the biggest bonus is that caribou ended up going up mm-hmm. and showed us where a little bitty seep was where you could have some water. That's right. So we had walked over there and we kind of decided we're like, well, we had well, the way that the mountain drainage has kind of worked. I'd kind of had two ideas in my head that we can kind of take our pack. And as much as we weren't set out originally to do a death mission, we had kind of had some ranges that we can kind of do a big old loop and come back to the place that we had actually landed at. Or we're going to drop down and then see if we can get a, a northern Uber with a horse string that was stationed just a couple drainages over and, and kind of have that in the back of our pocket. And so we kind of, we knew we had a few plans and we were just going to hope that we we're going to bump into the right sheep at the right time. And I think it was that next day we decided we got up early, we hiked up the ridge, we took our entire camp with us. 
Yeah, <laughs> so, I, so I will say that <laughs> my, the whole time I kept thinking, we're going to make a camp and then we're going to hunt different right. directions. And, and every day we roll up the sleeping bags, roll up the tent, everything goes back in the pack and we move camp. <laughs> but that was what we had to do. Yeah. With the big country hat and, and like, credit to everyone that was out there i mean all of our packs were tipping oof i know with the extra ammo and my optics and everything i think my pack was sitting right at 67 pounds when we left and that's without water mm. so you know you start thinking about adding two liters on either side and then a bladder and i think all of our bladders held like two or three but luck shined on us a little bit that next day though Kyle. it kind of made it worth it we uh we hiked down a few different ridges and, and got a glimpse and, and actually Byron had spotted one of the rams um, on a ridge just straight across from us, but it looked like it was on an untouchable precipice. Oh, <laughs> it looked like the doors of Mordor. Yeah. And, and I will say this wasn't like the next mountain over. It was two mountains over. I mean, it was a great <laughs> spot. It wasn't like uh, this was like an easy spot. I was like, how did you see that? Yeah. Now, now, were you obviously you always want to shoot a big one, but but was this giant ram or nothing, or was this I want a ram? No, I'm not that guy. I, I'm I'm a I'm a bow hunter, and it's only going to be bow kill. But I am an any legal ram hunter. Okay. I'm not going to pass anything up. I'm uh, no. <laughs> You're in good hey, company Dylan? here. You're okay. in good company. You know what I heard there? Fork and horn, baby. Fork and horn. <laughs> Forky or bust. Fork you, bust. All right. Okay. Go. Well, welcome. That's we're glad to have you in our in our uh, in our club. So, Jason, I got a I got a text this morning from Corey from Liberty Ranch, and I said, you, well, anyways, we're talking, and he said, well, I got to go pick my hunter up at ten, and I said, well, has he seen it? You know, how's the week been for him? And he said, well, he passed the mid one forties, and I said, well, he's probably not a little, he's not smart then. I mean, <laughs> I don't. I don't pass anything, much less a mid one forties. He's one of those guys. One of those yeah. guys. Yeah, well, I, I am that way on sheep. On other stuff, I can get picky. Okay, mm. uh, but see, the thing is, Kyle, Kyle will say that, but with sheep hunting, I mean, especially like where we are, we saw one ram for the first four or five days, and right. with the big country, I mean, like the sheep hunting game up there, like you got to focus on one sheep or one play. I mean, the hardest part is, I mean, you. We have no way of aiding to know if there's another band of rams around the corner unless we walk there ourselves. So that's the hardest part about this game up in the north is you have to make calculated decisions. It's like, okay, are we gonna are we gonna go after this band and and we're gonna try and get as high and make as many plays as we need to? But that's what like what Kyle says, like a legal ram. I mean, he looks like a he looks like a 190 class mule deer. You know, it doesn't matter. He's a trophy in itself because the the hardest part is like they have 10 by 42 vision. And we'll send you some of the pictures of like the terrain that they were living in. And they're, they're high right now. It's early. It's August. It's the beginning of August and it is hot and the bugs are absolutely terrible. And, and I think that was the coolest part is like, once you find a target that you're like, okay, this one needs a closer look at after we got the spot and scope, I think I, I let Kyle sit behind it and he kind of gave me a look and I gave him a look and we're like, okay, Armageddon, here we go. Yeah, no, it's like, yeah, that's definitely one we want to hunt. But also, yeah, he's not on the next mountain. He's <laughs> two mountains over there. So you're like, yeah, that's one we want to hunt unless we bump into another one on our way there. Precisely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, we, so gotcha. we, commit, we commit. Yeah, that's where we're going. But what we're trying to get at, too, is like where we were on that hillside. We, I remember we drank our fill that night. The temperature had risen so much that there actually was one spring that we had originally found when we had watched the caribou go and feed. And then all of a sudden stuck his head down into this hole and drank. We went and emptied that little water hole. And because it had been such a dry August and a very dry July, we literally had to go rooting around and try and find another water hole. And I think we all sat there, drank as much as we could and made a pack. And it's like, okay, that's the one ram we see. We have to go down into this big basin around a plateau and then drop into the other side because the ram, it looks like is on the other side of this valley. But we knew that there was water between us and him. So we're like, we're going to get to the bottom, have a really good drink before we all get headaches right now. <laughs> so we started with that. And uh, 
I think by the time we made it around the corner, call, it was about midday on the next day. And we come around and after walking on, you know, grass and having open views, yeah. it's literally a fortress of buck brush and willow and moose flora and fauna and we looked down and it's between us and the bottom of the basin of that mountain <laughs> it was so it was just steep enough that like you wouldn't like fall straight forward but it was <laughs> you're like holding on to the brush going down through it yeah but at this point though the hardest part was we had kind of a straight assault and like any hunters know it's like it's a baldy move this ram is perched in his castle he can see the entire valley below him but at this point, we kind of had to make a decision. We're like, well, we can go down through. We're not going to walk down any spines. We're not going to do as much as, you know, as we're comfortable with. And we had kind of a big, huge, gnarly rock in the middle of this basin. We're like, well, let's get to there and we can make a decision. Because the hardest part was, I think at this point, Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong, but we had been watching this ram and it was this great, big, long spine. And from what the map said, the spine on the back side of it on the on the opposite side of where the ram was to us it kind of went up into this big dead end u valley and from what it looked like on the map based on the elevation and the terrain and everything that we looked at it looked open and barren as heck so we kind of were faced mentally that we've come to that point of the hunt we had found a ram it was day three we were super excited we we're kind of closing in the distance but we we're also like okay well he's got an impending fortress wall in front of us. And so we had to either make a decision to go down, drop some of our gear, go down and around and make a play on this ram or take a chance and go all the way up and see if there was a back door corridor that we could get up above this ram. Just so that way we had kind of the element of surprise. We had the wind, but we knew we'd be crawling through the rocks just trying to get high. So I think our game plan at this point, Kyle, we got to the rock. We're like, we're going to have to sit down. We're going to have to think about it. (laughs) At this point, we knew we were committing to a suck fest. We just didn't know which direction we were going to go. So, then, and another thing is, this is day four. That's right. So, we're counting days at this point. Like, okay, if we commit to doing this, that's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be at least a day to get around up there. So, we're day five, and then we got to get out. And how are we going to get out from there? Because it looks so nasty up there. So, uh, but that's when, that's when we were sitting there. And once again, Byron says, hey, there's our sheep. Yeah, we were making it too hard. We were like sitting there in our own heads, get their game plan. And we didn't want to believe. We're like, no, Byron, don't be silly. And he literally was like, no, it's halfway down the mountain coming towards us. I remember Kyle like, that's how it's supposed to be. I had never seen that before. So, so yeah, we did yeah. Isn't so that how Frank Mosky does it, Dylan? He just wears a white suit with those little yeah, yeah, a little head head decoys. So they just come to him. Yeah, he just sits there and waits. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so we the, the way the way the sheep's angling down, we start thinking, well, maybe this guy's there's no water up in those rocks, and he's coming down to get a drink out of the creek. And uh, where he's coming down at an angle from us, we we're like. Basically, our, we're already gassed from three, four days of walking. Let's haul butt up this creek and try to cut him off before he gets down there. Hmm. And uh, I, I, I do know after, I don't know how far we went, but I, 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 I told Rachel, <laughs> we got to stop. I got to take a break. I, I am, I, my legs weren't doing what my brain was telling them to do. I well, and he it. says walk up a creek. This wasn't walking up a creek. We literally, we ditched our packs. We took rain gear and a snack with us because we were going to commit. If this ram was coming down, we we're going to camp. We we're going to snare him. But this wasn't a leisurely walk up some beautiful flat creek. We were running our way through the willows. And at one point, you know, you're going through the willows in this creek and it's really quiet. And all of a sudden you look down and the grass is mowed. And I'm looking around and there's bear scat. And it's pretty old. And there's a new bear scat. And it's a little less old and there's bear scat and it's like that's pretty fresh and then i look down where i'm stepping i'm like i'll look up at kyle and he and i both kind of do one of these we're getting out of this bear's nest (laughs) but uh yeah it was no easy walk we were looking like tarzan swinging through the the willows and this moose run and grizzly habitat and the hardest part was that as we were coming up this creek we lost sight of the ramp and so we had left Byron back there with my dog and our backpacks. And we were kind of like, well, we're either going to commit 
I mean, admittedly, I did get a little excited. And we we're going, and Kyle's like, Rachel, you need to tap the brakes a little bit here. We're we're getting a little crazy. <laughs> and at this point, we're like, you know, maybe let's just see if we can see him. And at this point, the ram had actually started feeding up into a few different places. And we're like, well, he's going up into one of those chutes. If he was going to come down, he betted as if he'd been watching and he was going to make a break for it. And at that point, Kyle and I both had to sit down. We're like, okay, well, he's going up. Do we play the odds, go back, make camp, and then we'll just, we'll take our camp. We know he's here somewhere. If we catch him coming down tomorrow, great. You know, that'll be what it'll be. That's in God's hands. You know, we might catch him up on the other side. And it was kind of neat because when we came up the creek, we were able to kind of get a turn at the topography. And there were some little like Ram Castle pinnacles. I was like, oh, I could shoot him in that. It's like, well, perfect. Let's just hope that he takes one of these three options, you know, and, and we're at least a little bit closer in the game. Because, I mean, Kyle, we got in. I think I had ranged it. We were like 600 yards from him, waiting yeah. for him to come off those pinnacles and up those chutes. So, uh, so yeah, so then it's getting late in the day. And he goes back. He's definitely going back up. And so we sneak back down the creek. And, I, and I'd even told Rachel at that point, I'm like, you know, if the same thing happens tomorrow, I don't. I didn't like the creek play because when you came up out of the creek, there was about 200 yards of open before you hit the mountain. And so if you're in the creek, you're stuck in the creek. But if we get the same situation tomorrow, maybe let's get on the mountain and maybe use the topography of the mountain to kind of cut the distance as, you, as he allows. And mm. uh, so next morning, I don't know. I guess we picked him out pretty quick that next morning, eh? Yeah, we literally, we got out of the tent and we had kind of had a little bit of spitty spatty rain because we had the beautiful weather the first four days of the hunt. And that was another factor that was coming in is that the last last four days of the hunt, it was meant to absolutely crap its pants on us. There was a storm coming in. We were going to lose visibility. And that night it had called for light rain. And I remember when we woke up, there was rolling fog coming up this valley. That's right. That's right. That was foggy. And yeah, so we, we kind of made a pack. We packed up our wet tents, did it as best we could. We kind of watched this ram and he hadn't really moved a whole lot. So we kind of said, okay, you know what? Let's just go slow. So all three of us and the dog, we just kind of weaseled our way through the rock path. And we literally didn't get, I mean, Kyle, we were, yeah. Like from where I rock, I'm trying to think in mile sense, but we were, we didn't even go 500 yards. And this ram was right there on a the pinnacle. And we kind of looked at each other like, well, the wind's not awesome, but we had enough of the drafts. So it's like, you know, if we take our rain gear, we kind of had come to a bit of an arm that had come down where a, a slide had been. And when we were looking at it, it looked a lot flatter than it was. Yeah. <laughs> but we kind of like, well, if we take a place. And we'd be there. <laughs> exactly. So we literally, guys, like, imagine a lot of those cinematography points in the movie where they're like, the camera angle is at 45, and there's mist, and it is rainy, and there's moss, and, and the rock up there is so noisy. We actually made a joke about it. When we got up, we had taken the top parts off the Mystery Ranch packs, put our rain gear, put snacks, and, I mean, we both knew if we are going to go commit to this for the day, we're, we're going hard. So we took a layer and we set up and like Kyle is a stealthy hunter. And I'm, I like to think that I'm not the most noisy, but there was nothing that we couldn't do. We had to be like spiders trying to put our hands holding rocks. Kyle caught one that had tried to fling us off the mountain. And then we had another one. We were quiet. We went down this entire screen and a rock above us that we had touched not five minutes ago, let itself loose and rolled all the way to the bottom. We kind of looked at each other like, well, <laughs> but i like to so, think of that so yeah we, movie. <laughs> we you don't know uh, now, now rachel are you a bow hunter i get to guide bow hunters but i'm usually guiding so much i don't get to hunt for myself okay all right because because they say bow hunters are really sneaky so i was just wondering who let that rock go it was oh. we were it was neither one of us it was it was it was going to go whether we were there or not it's like, like I a said, it, tree fall in the woods. Yeah, it's it making makes noise. A big bang. <laughs> so, so anyway, we we end up we we got to get elevation to get up to where he's at. And luckily, he had he was down the mountain a good bit that morning. He was <laughs> he was a third of the way down the mountain. He was out of the bad bad stuff to the point where we could kind of get 
to where he was and we got up level with him and it was it was you'd have kind of a a little finger that ran out and then there would be a, a slide between that and the next finger and we we kind of hopped a couple of those crossed some slides and got to a point where we can't get past his finger he's wide open from there but we're close i mean we're what was that 100 and 116 yards and this this smart guy right here he turns me he goes you know rachel if i was a rifle hunter we'd be done <laughs> i only said that because i hate it when guys say that to me and i, I thought know, I, and I say did it not first. Say that. <laughs> yeah. so that was that was a good uh good laugh but we got stuck there in the rain for oh it was a couple hours two hours but it was pretty dang close so we just sat there and watched him mm -hmm. and and he had the prettiest little spot he was out on a finger little looked like there was a little moss spot there he had the view of everything and uh, uh so we're we're just kind of hunkered down uncomfortable no no chance of getting any closer and he stands up and he turns back and goes back off of his finger into the next slide actually it goes into the slide on our side and gets out of sight and uh kind of me and rachel are like and rachel's like go <laughs> it's <just> like <laughs> i mean there's nothing else to do i you know so i'm like he's behind a thing basically there the finger he was on and the slide he went into and then there was a finger in between us and a slide that i would have to cross and uh being it must have been a 60 yards across there. So I, I got my, you know, basically, yeah. you know, bow in hand with nothing, go over my finger we're hiding behind, and I start crossing the shell. And every step was so loud. <laughs> but oh, yeah. I was like, okay, the finger's kind of blocking us. So maybe it's diverting some of the noise. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm halfway across this slide. And and I just kind of peeked back over my shoulder at Rachel, you know, maybe to get, you know, like you're doing good or keep going or stop. But I don't get that. Rachel, you can you want, do it. You want to show yeah. us show us what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I Kyle and I kind of had like a universal like like charade of like the ram is right there and literally She's doing this. And I'm like yeah. And does that mean I'm crazy for crossing it? <laughs> <laughs> and I turned back around and I am in the middle of this slide. There is not a rock higher than my ankle. And that sheep comes up and stands on that finger right in front of me. Or, or he's looking right at me. And I'm like, okay, there's really nothing I can do. And I don't even have a, at that point, I didn't have a arrow on the string. So I'm like, okay, that's priority number one. <laughs> so I just looked down <laughs> real slowly. Just well, how far is this, this Kyle? Uh, well, so, so I get the string. Yards. Next thing is I grab the range finder, and I just come up real slow and range him, and he's uh, 32 yards. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just standing in the wide open, and yeah. uh, but I have no shot. He's he's kind of just just the neck coming up over the finger, looking at me. So I'm just, you know, basically pants down. Nothing I can do. <laughs> and the ram well, just decides was, i'm gonna go up and when he does he steps, yeah. <laughs> he steps up and gives me his broadside at 32 yards and a slow walk and i cannot that there's nothing in my brain that can make me lead an animal it's never in the process when i'm shooting literally i was in kansas two weeks ago and I had a buck at 30 yards and he's slow walking and I cannot make myself think of that process anyway. So the Rams walking very slowly uphill and I'm like, man, it doesn't, this isn't going to get any better. And I, and I'd already drawn back and had the pin on him and uh, let it loose, uh, hit back of the ribs. But somehow with him walking up, uh, the angle was going back and, and how it, whatever I hit, it was something major because blood went everywhere. I mean, it was, it, it, Rachel saw it. I mean, it was no binoculars needed for that. It, it was a good hit. Uh, immediately grabbed another arrow 
the ram didn't go very far and he was facing me again looking at me and at this point you're kind of like okay let's get another arrow in it and i have the a frontal shot at 30 yards and and i hit right where i'm aiming i'm thinking i'm gonna bury it up through the vitals this way um and then he bails over the back after that shot and uh I scurry up to that point. There's no waiting or anything here. I wanted to peek over and see what I got. And so I covered that 30 yards, peek over, and he's there, head down, probably about the tip. But uh, I put one in the pocket then because he was quartered away. Um, and, and again, another 30-yard shot, three 30-yard shots. And uh, he, he goes down off that shot, and I can see the angle. And it's just like slow motion. Uh, I'm going to go downhill. <laughs> <laughs> and then end over end, he goes down probably I don't know, a couple hundred yards. Uh, a couple of couple of cuts on the face, but no damage to the to the horns. Oh. I, I lose sight of him, but I know at this point there's no way he's he's done. And, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's when I turned around and I think Byron back a mile back probably could hear me holler at that point you know that was it was on it was done we got it done and uh it was actually kind of a pain to get to him uh it took us took us a little bit to get across that slide over that finger and then down to where he was and he was he was wanting to keep going because when we got there there was we were really having to work to keep him in without keep him from keep going down the mountain Oh yeah, uh, it was awesome. It, and look, when we're talking like going down a scree, I mean these are these are the smallest of these scree or dinner plate size. Like this isn't walking across a nice New Zealand scree of like coarse little gravel bits. This is like walking down places that and everything. We had little drizzles of rain and everything. It was it was kind of we joked that the mountain must be very young or very treacherous because it literally that you could not be quiet. The only thing that was quiet was the wind. <laughs> um as we went through but it was it was pretty special to be a part of that and it's like kyle said it the craziest part was like when that ram started coming at first when he got up he was looking the other way and kyle and i kind of looked at each other like please don't go that way please don't go that way please don't go that way and whatever turned him turned around and come back and it it happened it worked it was pretty spectacular were you surprised to to be up on the mountains like that and then all of a sudden you're at 32 yards i know that's that's it's such big country and you're you're, you're like when you we first saw the ram he's two miles away you're like okay i've got to get in bow range of this, this one animal it's not like you had multiple you you have to make it right with this one and and yeah when, when he comes over at 30 yards it's like oh wow that we we are now it's it's on now. <laughs> yeah. So you're in the yeah. danger zone. Exactly. And uh so anyhow, uh we uh get Byron to bring the packs. Basically Byron brought everything. <laughs> it, it took him a while. Now, now we nickname him the mule. Is that the Byron the mule? Uh, we called him all kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> well, all good things. Yeah, we uh, uh, it it did take him forever. So, uh, which is uh, meantime we're getting rained on, and it's cloudy, and uh, not you know we're, we're would be miserable except we just killed a sheep, so we're on you know cloud nine now. Uh, but it took him seemed like an hour to get up there. So he gets there. Well, yeah. 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 So we get our cameras and stuff. We get set up and literally we're taking picture number one and a double rainbow pops out. And I mean, this is, I don't know if you've seen the viral YouTube video of the guy, with the double rainbow, but it's kind of like, hurry up and turn the ram this way and let's get some photos <laughs> yeah. while we have yeah. them. So oh, it's pretty, special. pretty cool photos with the double rainbow nice it was very cool it, it honestly it worked out so good because i mean at this point it's uh, the ram we literally got to see for two days so it's not like a ram that we really had four or five days worth of intel on and how we were going to pattern him 
because one of the thoughts was, and I think Kyle, we had kind of talked about why I hung back just a little bit. I mean, I was still within 70 yards when you and the Ram were going down, but the way that that finger moved up is as we were kind of sitting there waiting for him to make a play, we could see where that Joker could have an easy walk up a very nice shale screen and go up over the top. So we're kind of like, Oh, if he gets away and goes high, we want to be able to see where he's going. So we decided that one, I'm not good at charades, but two, you know, it all worked out for the best because man, it would have sucked trying to go up over the top out of that shoot, trying to get after that ram again. And and that 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 nasty. uh, I'm wondering if we maybe we need a sign language um breakout at convention. So (laughs) because charades at the convention, hunting charades. Yeah. Yeah. This the, you know, I would not have thought, oh, there's a ram over there. I would have thought, well, yeah, yeah. I, I'm crazy. I shouldn't be here. <laughs> but no, I, you that, loco, boy. As yeah. it, nasty as that mountain was, it did make for some good photos. It, it really was a good oh, background. Yeah. Nice. It also made us a little bit, you know, precarious because as we we're sitting there with all the rain that we would had the night before, we could hear rock slides. And that night, Kyle, when we made it down, we had had the thought that, you know, after we had seen all that fresh grizzly scat, we're like, well, we know we're not want to camp right near the willows with all this meat and this hide. But by the time we got down, Byron had come up with a one pack. So we still had to screw dang near. It was a couple, it was two or three kilometers back down through the willows, grab our packs. And by the time we got to our packs that night, we literally, we turned around and we looked, there was this wall of black. Yeah. And there, I don't know if the videos that you took, Kyle, when we were trying to set up 10, I don't even know if we tried to take videos. It was a wall no. of sheer misery. And we set up one tent at a time. One person would be holding poles. One would be trying to put the fly down. And we dove into our tents that night because it was I will just say, coming. Rachel was good enough that she's like, Kyle, get your tent out first. Let's get your stuff dry. So my tent went up first. And, uh, uh, but yeah, by the time everybody was in, it was a, it was a good storm. And, uh, mm-hmm. So it what was, you're saying was, is there's there's no ladies first on the mountain. Hey, if she said me first, I'm taking it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no argument. You know what? That's that's what that's what it, it seems like they're always asking for is equal treatment. So in this case, that that's exactly what you get with bow hunters. There was you know, you know what? None of none of that came. She she was one hundred percent that if anybody ever asked, man. I hear Rachel might be guiding me. I'm going to be giving them, giving her lots of praise. She definitely did her job yes. from from start to finish. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Although now the bar has been set, it's like, you know, you put Kyle 30 yards from this ram, so that's what I expect. 30 yards. I want 32 <laughs> yards or less. Well, I had the opportunity. I think one of the first rams I was ever at was um, with Jay Osting at Bow Hunting Safaris. And he and I, that was one of my first actual archery ram kills when I was in the Northwest Territories. And I, I think we were closer, Kyle. I think you were at 50 or 60 yards with him. So really? that was a day nine ram. Yeah, that was a day nine ram, beautiful 10 year old ram. No, yeah, well, it, that's, you know, one of the things as, cause we work with a lot of outfitters and, and that's one of the things that we try to, I mean, you never know for sure. But we really try to to weed out the ones that aren't set up because there's a huge difference in an outfitter who will take a bow hunter and an outfitter who's mentally prepared to yeah, go bow hunting. Time. And that was kind of the joke with uh, that I, if if I was a rifle hunter, I'd be done because as yeah. bow hunters, if, if your guide isn't committed to getting it done with a with a bow that's that's going to get said during the hunt mm-hmm. uh, yeah or things go wrong if, if if you were that close and you didn't get your shot that guy if he's not he or she is not ready to uh commit to this being a bow hunt then then that's in their mind and they're they're uh they're thinking man we should be done right now yeah that's the hardest part though as a guide though like you have to be mentally prepared to go into any situation no matter what caliber a rifle or or what weapon of choice a hunter has and i think that's I don't know. That's the thing that I love about my job as a guide is it's, it's the fun that, you know, I might be able to get in, but it's getting in there with someone else. Right. So that's, so I think that's the fun. So we're all in yeah, our tent. It's, it's raining like crazy. <laughs> and 
we all hear it. And, and at first I'm thinking, man, that's a lot of thunder. And it keeps getting louder and louder. Oh, yeah. and I, I can't tell you how long it went on, but this, we had, I expected the mountain to be flat. It was such a big rock slide. And I'm thinking, I hope these rocks stop before they get to us. I don't know how loud it was and how long it went, but it was, it was oh, yeah. crazy how loud that was. And we uh, had just been in that exact spot where this rock had come down. Like literally the last piece that Kyle had closed in on, we were yelling at each other. Our tents weren't, but a couple of yards away from each other. We were yelling at each other. And I remember looking out the peephole in my tent going, oh God. Is this going to be like a tsunami of rocks? Should we be getting out of our tents now? <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah. Yeah, something, that, maybe that was that one rock started off of it that finally moved. <laughs> I've, I've got my theories, Kyle. I've got my theories. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not a thought you want to have when you're on the mountain <laughs> a long way from home. Let alone, yeah. I mean, at this point, it's 9 or 10 o'clock at night, and we're all tired. We're done. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, nobody dies. Everybody's tent's fine. I will say Rachel's tent <laughs> is basically <laughs> a two-room apartment. It is so big. <laughs> I'm going to preface this with going into the season this year, I, I am a type A personality. I have all of my stuff, all my ducks in a proverbial row. And I set myself up for failure this year because I, my boyfriend and I had just kind of started moving in and I had stuff in at friend's place in Alberta, I had stuff down in South and somewhere between here and there, my tent poles for my Hilleberg, my go-to, my savior, I have lost them. And in my head, I never leave my poles outside of my bag. So I had to borrow a tent this year and Kyle called it the Emerald Palace because he <laughs> kid you not. The green? <laughs> the green Emerald Palace. Yeah. I mean, she couldn't stand up in it, but... <laughs> I could do I could do a Russian jig if I had to, but it's not exactly yeah. what you'd call you know a sheep hunter's tent. But yeah, yeah. See that that's <laughs> and, and see I would call that way too small because I couldn't put two cots and a table with a chair in it. That's like, <laughs> so, uh, I, I, yeah. um, but I, but I've I, I've self identified as a uh, truck camper. You know I, I I'm good as long as I can get my truck within a reasonable distance with all my junk. Hey, is that Dolly's making appearance? She was also. Oh, this actually is a Dolly. This yeah. is her friend. Oh, wait, no. Dolly's it's not at Dolly. home. That's okay. I just saw Dolly's a brown dog. Home. I'm sorry. That's okay. He's feeling a little needy. This is our friend's dog. Dolly's at home. She She's a lady of leisure right now. She lays in front of the fire. She doesn't pack meat or lift her paw. She's, you know, she at heart, I think she's down in Texas with Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> So now, now when you get that sheep and you know that there's grizzlies in the area, is that something where you uh, you put the meat outside, but then you bring the the hiding horns in the tent, so you're you know just to give you a fighting chance against the bears before they take it? Yes, I I have a very very strict rule about meat. I and as the guide, I've got I I think Byron had his mare's leg with him. Um, I carry a forty five seventy with four hundred and thirty grains of sit your butt down um so i like to have the meat away from everyone else's tent in the direct line of sight with mine and then i do take the cape and the horns into just the vestibule part of my tent so that way it's close that's one thing i i never used to have a dog i'd always just kind of backpack but i can hear a cricket fart about a mile away when i'm tent camping so i don't sleep very heavy but with dolly in camp i was I'm always very comfortable because she's going to give me at least a bit of a heads up that something's coming in that maybe we want to take a look at, but and we Byron, like to keep it out. Byron took some of his dirty clothes and, and hung them on, uh, <laughs> on, on some uh, trekking poles over the, over the meat to kind of, you know, give it some scent. Yeah. <laughs> it gave it a lot of scent. Bless his heart. By, He's, yeah. Byron uh, the mule. Poor guy. We're going to have to have Byron on just so you can, re, you know, respond to some of these. Oh, yeah. No, he's a beauty. He's got to come in and redeem himself is what he's got to do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, he did. He did awesome. He he was he was so fun to have on the hunt. He'd never really got to go. It was his first time coming to the North Country. And, you know, he had a few really cool moments where, you know, he'd always wanted to be up there and getting to do that. He actually, because he... When we asked for him to bring a backpack, he brought his, which is smart thing. And I'd asked for mine because I was going to, you know, I'll, I'll carry it off the mountain. And Byron asked, he's like, you know, Rachel, I looked at your pack frame and like 
Byron's what, 260? Oh. You know, six one, <laughs> six two. So and I'm five foot eight with like a small medium frame. And Byron looked at my backpack. He's like, Rachel, there was no way in hell I was putting your backpack on and taking it all the way no. up the mountain to you. <laughs> so he uh he carried the ram off the mountain for us, which was pretty cool. It, I think he he really enjoyed that. So yeah. the next day was uh was our one rain out day. Yes. It was Cape it day. Was a day, Cape and Mount. Uh dine on all the freeze-dried food we could. <laughs> Cause this is where this is where, you know, reality sets in and, and Kyle kind of he said, you know, Rachel, I'd I really enjoy hunting with you, but if you make me crawl up the way we came and hike all the way up that miserable river, we're going to have some serious words, some thought here. <laughs> and at that point, I, you know, I was with him. So I was like, now not only are we carrying our backpack, but we got a full round because Kyle took a life-size cape. No, Did I do a life-size? No. It was shoulder cape. Well, it felt like a life-size after a while, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but we had like an NWT in the Yukon. You take all edible portions of the meat. So that's, we kind of started weighing our packs and thinking, okay, well, maybe we can call for that northern Uber that I had suggested, you know, a couple yeah. of days previous before we committed to go in this direction. I will say that the valley we were in, we were, if if this didn't work out with the sheep, we were going to keep heading up over the pass of this valley because we did have a good hunch that that was where we would be looking for sheep. And uh, yeah. so if, if this didn't work out, we keep hunting over the pass. Um, so really, we, we had a, a short, fairly steep climb or miles back behind us to go back to the airstrip. Uh, so uh, we, we committed we're going to go up and over. And hmm. uh, uh, so <laughs> we went up. <laughs> it, it really does. You know, it doesn't seem like we went very far that that day, our first pack out day. But mm -hmm. it was it was so much up and over, <laughs> and, yes. and getting around that lake was the that was that stunk. Yeah. So what Kyle is very kindly not alluding to is that his gentleman hunt quickly turned into actually one of the biggest circuits that I think any of the guides and clients did this entire season from where we started to where we walked up and through the passes, killed the ram, carried the ram up through the height of land onto the divide through the divide, but actually it kind of was neat. We we're kind of taking it in and like, Oh, there's a cool camp spot. There's a cool camp spot. And there was waterfalls and there was That's shale. Awesome. Oh, it was absolutely beautiful. It literally looked like a piece out of, I hate to say it, but Lord of the Rings. Like it, there were dark impending mountains with smoke or well, not smoke, but clouds rolling in through them. And there we were walking with our packs and we had coordinated that I think it was a day and a half from that time we we're going to try and, and connect with one of the horse crews that had finished up their hunt and they're going to jingle a bunch of horses up to us. And in our heads, I think Kyle and I looked at it, we're like, oh, it's just a lake. We'll just scoot around it. Well, what we didn't realize is one side of the lake is completely bog and the other side is half Volkswagen size boulders that we got to navigate through, through the rain, through our packs. I think by the time we made it to where that horse rendezvous point was, we all kind of looked at each other. We're like, well, that was fun. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, it was a day and a half. Um, we, uh, we made a, we got over the pass and made a camp and then, uh, it really didn't look that bad, but then the, when we went around blue Lake, mm -hmm. uh, the right side of that, those rocks were better, but not a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew somebody's breaking a leg in here. Yeah, it was, and he was like, man, give me some Texas thorns. Hey, look, look, look yeah. I live at 27 feet above sea level. The, the the highest mountain we have is the Fire Out Mounds. It is flat. There is no preparing <laughs> me for this kind of stuff. <laughs> he yeah, gripes, but I tell you what, he wasn't far behind. We went as a team, and he just kept trucking. He goes, if you don't see me. We stopped and I was like, I never didn't see him. We we made a pact and and Kyle carried the ram and we took everything kind of split up and I thought I'll tell you what, it didn't take any of us very long by the time we set up our camps at night to hit the pillow and and, and race to hear who was gonna snore first. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'll tell um, you what, that's 
that's quite the story. Um, no, we're, not, we're, not we're not done now. We're not, we're done. not even done. We, we got 40 <laughs> miles to go on the horses. That Four. same day. <laughs> so, yeah. What, they, they you know what? If, if you're not on a horse very often, like, it sounds like riding a horse is better than walking, which it is. But the next day, you know that you rode a horse that far. You're, yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, that's me. Rachel's on horses all the time. But we, uh, uh, they pick us up. Uh, the same what, day that we walked yeah. around Blue Lake. Yeah. So we get, they pick us up, what, around? one thirty. We left. Picked us up at one thirty. We We made it to the horses at about 12.30. We shook down, packed our backpacks, did the two diamonds, jumped on those horses. I remember looking at the clock going, okay, oh, I, this is new territory. It'd be interesting to see how fast we move down. It was 1.30 when we left that lake. And it was quite a while before we just made it to where they were stationed at already. Three hours. Okay. So yep. now, now and, and, and good on them. They knew we were coming, uh, had fried up some caribou backstrap and, uh, yep. Um, so we had a hot meal, but we weren't there in the car. <laughs> yes. and off again on the horses. So we're heading from there to base camp. And that was yeah. another five and a half hours, I think we did, Kyle. So all in all, after hiking for four and a half, well, no, because we started hiking about eight o'clock that morning. Yeah. So we hiked from eight o'clock till noon, got on a horse at one thirty, and we had a storm from hell chase us out of that valley. <laughs> I saw the clouds coming and thought, you know, surely, you know, we'll just get a, you know, just a shower on us. And, and no, I mean, we hadn't got far enough away from camp not to hear the, the, the bells ringing on the horses and it starts raining. And then like Rachel said, it's five hours and it's not just raining. It is sheets of rain. We were getting full on sleet sideways to the point where we all had our hoods up and I had the two pack of horses behind me. Kyle was on one horse and then Byron was on the last and we were weaseling our way through and there's quite a big, big high plateau where there is no willows. There's no trees. You are open against elements. And I remember trying to look back and my saddle horse can feel me trying to turn around and he was fighting me with his head his ears pinned back against his head because he did not want to look back and I looked I, out of the corner of my eye and we all look like a bunch of hoodlums and we were just like assaulted actually comes to mind we we're getting assaulted by the rain for the next four and a half hours of our lives and I got a text me or an in reach message from Jordan going, watch for the lightning. It's sure dancing out this way. I remember going great. <laughs> if we make it to camp, we're we're gonna really have an epic tale. And we come in looking like a bunch of drowned rats, I think, at like 10 o'clock at night that night. It was I, I couldn't even hardly get off the horse at that point. I, I almost just wanted to just roll off and fall on my shoulder. <laughs> oh yeah. You're just looking for a soft spot. You're just like, I don't think my legs will move. Exactly. To get out of the saddle, so I'm just gonna roll up. Oh yeah. Well, and the hard part was I didn't know the trail neither. I mean, I the horses know the way, and I put my faith into it, and they gave me some rough directions. I mean, you can't really screw it up, but in your head, you know, when you're going somewhere, you got landmarks. So you're like, oh, okay, we're halfway. We're gonna make it. You know, we're we're three quarters away. We're gonna make it. <laughs> and there was so much cloud, we couldn't see where in the sweet heck we were. And Kyle's like, "Are we there yet?" I'm like, "Yeah, maybe." I don't know, Kyle. What do you want? Almost to there. <laughs> We're almost, almost there. there. I was like, Kyle, what would Kyle didn't know? I was like, geez, I hope we took the right trail because otherwise we're headed to the wrong camp. But <laughs> <laughs> that'd have been a sick joke. Uh, it was. It was getting pretty dark by the time we were we were back there. Man. No, it was. There's nothing like starting your trip with a with a plane ride in. Hiking your butt off for six days and then riding back into camp with a ram on the pack horse. And even though we were cold, wet, hungry, and tired and all of the above, it was a pretty good feeling to walk into the base camp and sit down and have a have a sit down. So I'll bet. That's what I was I think at one point I told Rachel is that that the rams that I have that are on the wall, I I do not give them you get back here and you're watching football on the couch and they're on the wall and you just don't go back through all of that and what it you know to to be successful and to get it done you forget about what what it takes to get it done it it's 
it makes it that much more rewarding. I, I, I appreciate this hunt makes me appreciate the other ones again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very nice. So are, are you going back again next year? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. No, I, well, I will say, uh, go back enough. I, when I kill my grand slam Ram and, uh, Canmore, I, I messaged Mark Buer with Boa and his fire consultant and said he booked it. And I told him to, to whoop my hind in if I ever called him to book another sheep hunt. <laughs> so even, even when I was committing to doing this, I was like, do I use that credit for a fanning ram or do I use it for a moose hunt, which sounds so much easier to me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and up until months before this, like just a couple of months, I'm like, Maybe I should switch it to a moose. <laughs> but, but no, I, I'm. Uh, I would like, you know, it, this much of me would like to hunt for California <laughs> now. But uh, I'm pretty sure I'm. I'm a tree stand guy now. <laughs> You're a tree stand guy, yeah. Coos you deer are done that. Good. Yeah. So what? So what is the next big thing on your? on your list your bucket list what's at the top of it now uh as far as booking or what do i have i'm going to spain in a couple of weeks okay um, for ibex um and that's kind of mountainy so <laughs> that may be yeah that may be uh um a little physical but uh no not 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 a lot i've got uh i like i'm kind of joked about it but i do i do want to spend a little bit more time whitetail hunting I've been uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, mountain hunts and and uh, you know big big game hunting where where I might be booking a, a bear hunt or a sheep hunt or and kind of get back to the things I want to hunt with buddies uh, uh, like a, uh, the coos deer hunts in Mexico are fun because it's a camp atmosphere and you know you got three or four buddies there and you get to hear what they saw during the day good food that kind of stuff but uh, um, I will say that, it, that, so, so of course, Rachel had, a, had, uh, more hunters coming in and, uh, after me, uh, I left there and went straight to another Yukon hunt. I had a <laughs> caribou hunt. So another 10 days in the mountains <laughs> that wasn't a whole lot better. <laughs> but yeah. He also, I just, this is a side note. There also was the most Uber Eats exchange you've ever seen. If you know Kyle Hudgens, you know that he has a strong affiliation for a Whataburger. And one of his friends from Texas hand delivered. That's I think that's what gave him the courage to continue. No, no, I, I, I was uh, on in reach with a buddy of mine, uh, Matthew Murphy here in Texas, and he was actually coming up the following week. And I and I'm I, on our rain out day on, on, on Cape Out Day. And I'm in the tent and I order a double meat water burger with cheese. Can you bring that to me, please? No. Nope. And and when they take me to the airport <laughs> and Matthew's flying in, I eat a water burger there in the Yukon <laughs> outside, of the, <laughs> outside of the little airport. I, I've had a water burger and it's, a, and it's it delicious. must be a Texas thing. Uh, if you get to Texas, you definitely have to get one. Yeah, I've I've had them, and I think it's just you know you have an affinity for what you're used to. So it wasn't a bad burger, but it wasn't one that I'd have needed delivered from you know, twenty two hundred <laughs> miles away. Hey, you know what? It gave him the courage to go back in, and he did another two weeks. So last time that I might drove, be the nectar. <laughs> last time I drove across Texas, we saw an In and Out. We're like crap, we gotta get a burger. So we pull in, get a burger, and like. Five miles down the road, we see a, a water burger. I'm like, crap, we got to get a burger. So five <laughs> minutes later, we had a whole nother meal because we had to eat it both. So, yeah. See, now yeah, when you awesome. were there, did you, did you stop at a Bucky's? Oh, Bucky's is the that greatest thing on earth. I want to oh, yeah. get, I wanted to get married in a Bucky's, but my wife said no. <laughs> well, you guys are speaking rough. French to me. I have no idea. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a gas station mall there's every, everything you need they have at the buckies 
I can see why your Brad probably didn't want to get married at one. Maybe just, you know, slight hunch. <laughs> Rachel, when, when, when y'all come down pig hunting, I'll, I'll take you to a bucket store. Okay. <laughs> you gotta go to a bucket store. <laughs> you can't go to Texas without buckets. So here's there the thing. So, so Kyle, now that you're like, you know what? Hey, I, I did the mountain thing. It was a lot of fun, but but now I'm ready for camp and just sitting around and, and having the camp experience. Do you have your Chuck Adams tickets? To go share camp with Chuck Adams in Oklahoma? I do not, no. Okay, all right. Well, don't forget to get those because if okay. you want to share a camp with somebody, can you imagine the stories that Chuck Adams will have? I mean, you can sit around for probably a few days just for with him telling you about world record hunts. And can, can you imagine when Chuck Adams hears I win and he's going to say, the Kyle Hudgens? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what... You know, he called me earlier today and he says, hey, he says, you're doing a podcast with Kyle. Make sure that the Kyle Hudgens gets tickets so that he can come because I'd really like to hear his stories. That's what he said. So that, was, that was a personal request by Chuck that you get enough tickets so that, so that you're in the bucket. Good deal. So, but no, that's uh, we're, we're looking forward to that. that. That should be something fun. And once again, it's it's not a sheep hunt, but it's it is definitely going to be a good, good time. Well, now the one thing that we do on every, every single program, and we're going to do it twice today because there's two of you on, is when you find yourself up on the mountain or up in that tree, what is one piece of maybe non-traditional gear that you don't want to be without? I'll let Rachel go first. Oh, no, no, I, no. Please, gentlemen, first. Okay. You know, I'm still a guy. So we need Byron on the mule on for this because he'd probably have better answers than <laughs> you guys. You guys have pared it down enough that you probably don't have like super interesting stuff, but I'll well, let Byron's mule has some I'll, cool stuff in his pack. I'll say, I'll mm -hmm. say probably the one thing, and it's, it's kind of camp related. I definitely, but if, if you share camp with me and it's cold, I'm going to have my feathered friends, my little down booties. They, they look like little moon boots, but uh, Crocs definitely work good up in the mountains. Yes. And, but mm -hmm. but the comfort of the warm down little booties is is pretty nice. I I um I I've worn them whether it was on a boat hunting Sitka and Kodiak, or uh, I've taken them to Mexico and and sheep hunting, and they don't weigh anything, but and then when it's really cold at night, you can sleep in them in the sleeping bag. Keeps your feet nice and toasty. I was I was definitely a little jealous when Kyle whipped those suckers out, you know, because it, it gets cool enough up top. And I remember looking at my Crocs thinking, oh, I'm a bougie girl. Look at my street runners here. And I look over and he pulls out these beautiful things of just pure fluff and foot bliss after hiking boots all day. And I was like, I'm trumped. That's it. I can't go back now. Now I'm looking for a pair of boots. So booties. All right. So what and, and so what are their they're a down booty? Yeah, if they're called feathered friends. They're made in Canada. They're uh maybe a pair is about a hundred bucks. And uh they kind of have a little weatherproof outer shell that uh I wore them in Canmore. Uh, I like I was you, you walk like a hundred yards from the camp to spot sheep and I'd literally walk from camp to our spot and spot. <laughs> with my little down booties on in the snow um but then yeah you can take that little outer shell off and uh and it's just uh it's kind of like a poofy jacket but for your feet gotcha yeah. all right here we, well, that's a new one well here we go jason right there bud there they are i think they are, are. Mine are kind of great great. purple those are moon boots i i had something very similar to that in way too many years ago <laughs> Jay, you I, that purple I've, carried right them to the I've carried them to the whitetail stand and uh, thrown a little hand warmer in there and slipped them back on. Pro tip. Pro tip. There All you right. go. There you go. Pro tip from the Kyle Hudgens. <laughs> the Kyle Hudgens. That's right. I, I don't see. <laughs> he kind of expect to see you in those in Reno. <laughs> when there you, you go, go Jay, up right there. To the nugget, I yep. expect you when you walk in. I, I want to. <laughs> that's. I want to hear everybody talking. 
V. Kyle Hudgens is here, and he is in Moon Boots. Yeah, <laughs> I will, I'll have that on with my Whataburger shirt. Perfect. Which, nice. which I might have had in camp as well. <laughs> okay. That is a diehard look, Kyle. That is, if I've ever seen a sheep hunter wearing a Whataburger t-shirt and Moon Boots to a convention, I'm going to look mm-hmm. at that guy and go, he is here for comfort. Let me tell you. That's right. All right, Rachel, same question for you. And I mean, you're you're a guy. So we're going to ratchet up the pressure. Oh, Chris. I know. He took my Crocs. I mean, I thought I was pretty bougie with that. I mean, they're lightweight because a lot of guys, like the big thing is a lot of guys will carry like wiggy waders or something like that when you're crossing creeks. And I mean, especially if you've got like a big crossing, you know, I the last thing I hate, I hate having wet feet. So I usually will, you know, go down to my shorts or I'll roll my pants way up as kind of high as a cone and I'll go through on my Crocs because there's nothing nicer at the end of the day, no matter how comfy your boots are, to be able to put Crocs on and like teep a creep around up on the top of the mountain and look over the corner looking at sheep. But you kind of trumped me, Kyle. I don't know. To be honest, the two things, I mean, obviously I, we ranch and stuff at home and I actually take a silk scarf with me. Um, it's warm. I definitely look like spaghetti Western sometimes. I'm sure Kyle kind of laughed at me because it was August and I had one with me. But a silk scarf for warmth, to like wrap it around your neck or tying as a headband or whatever, um, it saved my butt. The amount of hot air that you have escaped. And that, uh, the thing is, too, I was a medic at one point and I had an old cowhand tell me, he's like, you know, it's a tourniquet in the fashion. So mm. I, for safety wise, I always have a silk scarf with me. Um, but my Leatherman, it's bulky. It is heavy. It is not practical. It's not an Allen key, but I never leave camp home. I actually got mine in my purse right now. Um, because there's always something that needs fixing. There's nothing worse than being on a stock and having a guy's, you know, scope go down and, and come loose or keys need tightened or the, um, trap on a rifle fall out, um, for the magazine or a bow something needs tightened i mean obviously you back off and you recite things in but that is one piece of equipment besides your standard clothes a good backpack and the whole product spiel that you know i think there was what's that harrison ford movie six days seven nights and she she says that very famous line what are you you know one of those guy guys <laughs> what do you mean you send them into a, the mountains or send them in the woods with a pocket knife and a q-tip and they build you a shopping mall i butchered that line but that's kind of that's always been my mentality. If I got that Leatherman, I probably can get myself out of most situations. Leatherman, okay. So you're and you take that even up on the mountain. When I do. I have it on my. Matter. Yeah. All right. Ounces make like pounds, it. but you know what? Ounces make pounds. I put it on my belt loop, um, on my backpack, and it's just one of those things that I never leave home without it, and I've used it so many times. And the Leatherman Wave, I don't like all these new fancy ones with these gadgets and holes in them. I like a good traditional break it in half if you can uh, with all the different fixtures. Um, Phillips Robertson head, bone saw, you got it. It's there. Nice. It's a shame that we can't ask uh, uh, Byron this question because he, uh, I'm telling you, I know. It, it might be a long answer with all the stuff that got packed on the pack. You'd have a list. Can you oh, go like, he, oh, man, I don't want to be without this or that. Or, yeah. He definitely, I think his biggest thing, he got a, himself a really good backpack this year, Mystery Ranch Marshall. And he he really appreciated being able, he learned, like, you know, he's he's a hunter down here in the south, and he's he learned about packing his bag and making sure that his weight's distributed. And by the one thing he did say, he said, you know, good boots, because he brought just, you know, some good leather Irish setters, but um and he said the gear you know he had had you know hunting gear from home and he said that is one thing it it sounds foo-foo and it looks kind of extreme but when you can pull out some down jackets or some you know synthetics and they dry off like all the goofy things that we try and sell on gimmicks for products they keep you on the mountain longer they dry up faster and they're lighter weight i think i think byron that was one of his things i know we talked about it later on in the season that's going to be on his on his gear list going into next year so you bet well i'll tell you what uh great to hear about your story appreciate you guys spending some time with us today and uh so rachel now that now that you're uh hunted with the cal hudgens a couple times you gonna make it to reno to convention we're really hoping so 
really hoping so we're right in the middle of calving in april so i might just kind of give jordan one of these and and i'm gonna go down yeah. and join kyle and my feathered friends and maybe i'll get a whataburger t-shirt you might have to bring one up to reno for me so that way i feel you know like what? i'm a cool group that's uh how many waterburgers can you fit in a checked bag kyle um Ooh, challenge that yeah in a checked bag of 50 pounds <laughs> half <pound> burgers <laughs> you know, maybe a pile of them i think we get it Dylan, let's talk to Heather. Maybe, maybe we have a water burger night. In That's Reno. what I'm talking about. So, hey, I'm, I, I'm there. I like patty melts, just so you know, Kyle. Patty no, melts. We're always looking, and they're good. We're always looking for that next great thing. You know, last time it was the, uh, it was the meet and greet with Michael Waddell. This time we could have water burgers with the Kyle Hudgens. Hey, yeah. so Boom. last last January I hunted down in Mexico, coos deer hunting with Nazca. And uh, Frank, I, we were talking about what a burger, and I just kind of asked him, like, how do you get yours? And uh, so he told me, I, I, I've forgotten now, but it might have been no cheese with mustard, I, something like that anyway. So I'm getting to the airport to go to Mexico at like, I don't know, like 3 a.m. And I what a burger's 24 hours. So swing in there and pick up two of them, drop them in a Ziploc. And when I get off, in Mexico, I had Nazca two water burgers. He he immediately eats one, and then the next day, sitting in the coos deer blind, he's in reach of me, saying, "There is nobody else in Mexico sitting in their blind <laughs> coos deer hunting eating water burger." <laughs> oh yeah, that's uh, I like it. So well, you know what? We'll we'll be looking for that in Reno. It's okay. not soon. Yes. All right. Well, guys, thanks so much for jumping on here with us. Great to hear your story. I, I'm not, I think there's probably two kinds of people who, who are listening to this podcast. And there's the people who are sheep hunters that are going, wow, that's amazing. And then there are the people who maybe aren't sheep hunters that are going, yeah, that's Ram. <laughs> so that's, anyway, uh, appreciate you sharing that and uh, can't wait to hear more when we, uh, next time we see you guys. All right, Hopefully man. in Reno. Thank you very yes. much. All right. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you.